Hi everyone, welcome to a tutorial for the object we're going to make in Fusion 360. And on the screen in front of you, you can see a Thrustmaster Warthog stick. And what we're going to make is an extension that sits between the base and the stick and screws down onto the existing uh, base and also the collar then screws onto the top of the extension. This is especially useful for when you've got the stick centrally mounted and uh, what I'm also going to do is make this parametric so that with a few adjustments in the Fusion 360 model you can customize it to your own needs. Okay in Fusion 360 now we can see the object and as I said I'm not going to show how I created this from scratch um, but let's just walk through the parts here. So we've got the actual extension itself which has got the threaded end and we'll take the mini DIN connector that sits in the top and then we've got a base below that. Let me just take those two off. And that was just to make sure that we've got a perfect match, if you like, for the bottom of the extension. And you can see that there. It's exactly the same as the one on the bottom of the stick. And I've actually just taken a slice of these two connectors out of this model and printed them as well, just to make sure that they fit on the original Thrustmaster Warthog, or Cougar for that matter, um, base and stick. Okay, so we don't really need that body but what we do need is the collar clamp which is a split model essentially of a collar clamp and it uses m4 bolts to hold the two halves together and that's threaded obviously on the inside there um, you could use bolts and something like epoxy resin you'd have to be quite careful though about doing that because any epoxy resin that seeps out on the inside is obviously going to seep into these threads so you might have to manually clean those out which could be a bit of a pain but the bolts should be sufficient to hold that together and the actual shaft extension itself has a 12 mil hole which fits the connectors into it uh, same size as the originals and that 12 mil hole runs all the way through this shaft um, for the for the extension wiring that you'll need to either make or buy yourself okay now the s bend in this gives you a bit of clearance usually over a seat which might kind of sit in this area here hopefully you can see the cursor and the parametric part of this is going to be about the s curve and also the tilt if you like of this coupling here because normally you would want that tilted forward a few degrees and i'll show you how to do that similarly when you're kind of sat behind the stick which will be in this kind of position you will also want this connector and the stick itself twisted or yawed over to the left a little bit if you're right-handed or similarly the other way if you're left-handed there's also some adjustment there that's not quite as elegant as the s bend and the tilt angle but let's get into that right now so in order to do the twist and you have to do the twist before you do the tilt the reason for that is that you uh, if you do it the other way around it won't drive the model properly uh, when you make the amendments okay in order to drive the twist that you want you actually need to alter sketch number 11 but for some reason it won't let you rotate sketch number 11 if you edit the sketch so you've got to do it from within the model not quite sure why that is but hey ho that's uh, fusion 360 for you so let's just get rid of all the other stuff on here okay to do this we just simply grab hold of the sketch get our move copy find the rotation control that we need in order to spin this and we just move it around by the number of degrees we want so if we want a right-handed one at 15 degrees and we move that there we can just tap the value in click on OK that will work its way through the model and you'll see when we switch the model back on the connector now matches that sketch it's essentially recalculated it 
and you'll see now that we've got a 15 degree yawed stick. The stick, when we put it on here, will now be pointing slightly over to the left, which is great for a right-hander. Similarly, you could do the same for a in the other direction for a left-handed variant. Okay, so that's the, the twist done. I'm just going to back out of that. Okay, the next bit we're going, I'll show you, is how to alter the bend uh, and the extent of the bend. Also the tilt angle of this coupling uh, on the top here. So, and the way that we drive that is from sketch number five. And you can see, hopefully, inside that tube. In fact, let me just switch the body off. You can see the sketch is just a line. And it's a spline line that's adjustable but via these two points here. And there's also a driven angle at the top. So let's go in there and edit the sketch. Edit the sketch. And you can see we've got a couple of parameters we can set here. So we've got the amount that that S bend goes back, and this is actually upside down, so <laughs> just have to bear with me on that. So we could set this to 70 degrees, but you'll see that that puts a sharp kind of transition in this area. So what we'd have to do is get hold of these two handles and maybe adjust those. And it's really just a case of moving them and it will smooth out the line for you. Similarly, if you want the tilt adjusted, so you want it tilted forward, then you just basically take that 90 degree value there and plug in the new one and, and you can see it tilts that line forward. And then if you stop the sketch, it takes a couple of seconds just to calculate everything, switch the body on and there we go. Hey presto, we've got a new, a new extension arm which is tilted forward by 10 degrees and also goes backwards. You can also make this taller, but I wouldn't make it too tall because essentially the additional leverage that you, um, although this is gonna be very strong because it's quite thick, this tube, uh, it's 26 mil thick with a 12 mil hole through it. So it's got pretty chunky walls if you print that without any infill. But obviously the longer this is, this arm is, the more leverage you'll have over this area here coupling and, and there's chance that it might fail um, i haven't tested all variations obviously uh, so you just have to use that itself and then really it's just a case of taking your result hitting the make button clicking on that body and then over into cura to set it up for printing and you're on your way so there we go uh, a quick tutorial on how to customize this Fusion 360 Thrustmaster Warthog or Cougar stick extension for your own cockpit purposes. Hopefully you find that useful. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.